Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I'm bringing on to bite-sized pieces today. Wow, there is a lot going on, so let's jump in. So first up, here's why Bitcoin flash crash and what to expect next. This is a good article by Akash uh, Jurimoth, Jurimoth, but uh, it doesn't tell the whole story also. Mike Novogratz talks about this being one of the most important years for crypto, and I got to believe him. I got to think that he's correct. However, I don't think it's just this year. I think next year coming up in the first two quarters is going to be massive. And I like to hear from guys who have been there also. Bitcoiners are transitioning from maximalism to centrism. And if you look at some of the different social media outlets, you will not see it. But I believe that this is going to become the mainstay. That'll also lead us to Q of the day. We'll go over two different questions. That'll be at the very last part. But before we do that, let's take a look at what the heck is going on with the market. So today it is September 2nd. It's about 2 p.m. Texas time. Hoping to get this video off pretty quickly. But what the heck happened? So Bitcoin down 5%, which, you know, in, in this market, not too big. But uh, we haven't seen that too. Uh, well, we haven't seen it lately because of the uh, bullish sentiment towards cryptocurrency. Most importantly, Bitcoin and most importantly, DeFi. But uh, hit it, took a big tumble. Now it's down to 11.372, down 5% in 24 hours. And on top of that, and you also have bigger hits. Eight, almost 9% for Ethereum, 6% for XRP. Tether is Tether. Nobody cares. Chainlink almost down 10%. Uh, Polkadot, Polkadot, Polkadot down 6 uh, Bitcoin Cash. I mean, everything across the board is down. Bitcoin SV finally drops out of the top 10. Uh, EOS down 10, 2.2, and so on and so forth. So uh, not a great day uh, for the cryptocurrency market, but a pullback, like we have always said, is healthy. The question is why? Because this is not just a pullback, but it feels like more than that. And how far will we go? Well, it's anybody's guess, but we can kind of take a look at what's going on. However, I will tell you this, that there was an article that was written that talks about how uh, Bitcoin doesn't doesn't uh, control the market anymore, and it doesn't really matter. And I gotta, I'm here to tell you, I don't think that's true, uh, because it, as we see, Bitcoin tumbles, everything else tumbles. However, maybe the real question is, was it Bitcoin that tumbled, or was it DeFi that tumbled first? That's the real question, because DeFi, in, in my opinion, uh, it's it, there is opportunities for massive gains. Do not get me wrong. Uh, I think it is it is phenomenal. I think DeFi is the future for sure. I just don't think that going up, you know, 200, 500, thousand X in a week is <laughs> is sustainable. I, I just don't think it is. I mean, call me crazy, but uh, that's just how I am. Now, a lot of people uh, out there will be like, you know what? You're crazy. This is something new. It's never been like this. And this is how it is. Well, let me tell you something. Um, as long as I've been around, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And I've lived through a lot of different things in my 40 some plus years on this planet. And I can just tell you right now that uh, nothing really surprises me anymore. And when I saw cryptocurrency come out in 2017, I thought this was it. This is going to be fantastic. It's going to the moon. How can people not see how fantastic it is? That was in 2017. And guess what happened in 2018? huge bomb and it just went down like crazy i'm like what the heck's going on the more things change the more they stay the same so where does DeFi gonna go i don't know again i think it's gonna be awesome i just don't know if uh it can just sustain going up 100 200 500 percent every single time there has to be a little bit of a drawback so uma uh, we see that there what else we got? Yearn.finance, which was up 117% for the week uh, in seven days. That is phenomenal. However, I think it was at 38,000, somewhere around there. Now it's at 29,000. So if you got in, you fumbled in, don't kick yourself. It happens. Even it happens to me. It, uh, not as much as it used to, but, uh, you know, just... Uh, just reset yourself. No big deal. And then uh, what else we got? 6.64. OMG Network. I don't know why that's down. That was fantastic. Thankfully, it uh, took some of the, the fees off of Ethereum. Thank you, OMG. I appreciate that. And then uh, also, where is that? I'm looking for Sushi. Sushi. Here we go. Down 34%. But I got to tell you, massive run. Hasn't even been, been up a week. And uh, we see it's almost doing what is this 24 hour volume 597 million and it isn't it hasn't even been around a week so if you got into sushi congratulations it's just down a little bit today but hey i think uh, not too long ago it was like a three bucks so what are you gonna do all right let's jump into today's top stories so this is by akash uh Jeremoth. i'm sure i screwed that up but first of all who is this guy and what you know uh should we listen to him as far as what he writes well akash here 
full-time crypto writer, analyst at AMB Crypto. He's an engineering grad with an avid interest in finance and economics. Economics. Attracted to the chaos of trading. Who isn't? Akash has invested in Bitcoin, ETH, and XRP for educational purposes. Sure. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Look, I'll take a... I will definitely read an article from somebody who is in our space. So I'll give this guy a pass. What do we got? So... Bitcoin witnessed a flash crash or a crash, a pullback, we'll say, because I know that's going to be in the comment section. It's not a crash. It's a pullback. Okay, great. 11.7, 11.1er. Great. But it happened less than an hour, and it's taken down a lot of altcoins with it. Uh, everything's down about 2%, 2, 2 to 6% in the last hour. And as we just took a look, it is even more so than that, with the exception of Polkadot. How is, actually, I didn't really go over that. I think I did, but let's just make sure. Polkadot. That's still down 6%. What are you going to do? All right. So going on. This has caused a casket of liquidations that range as much as $45 million with about $9 million worth of sell liquidations. For all my traders, my heart goes out to you. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And uh, hopefully you can bounce back. Perhaps the crash was just a FUD from the circulating news about the Korean exchange that was reportedly being seized by the police. According to South Korea's newspaper, the Seoul Shinmun, Bithums or Bitthum, how you want to say it, Offices has have been raided by the authorities. In addition, the exchange is reportedly being accused of pre-selling 30 billion worth of BXA tokens to investors, whatever that is. Uh, to make matters worse, after the tokens were sold, the acquisition deal with Singapore's BK Group didn't go through, and the tokens were never listed, leading to investor losses. So that's part of the story, and it could be true, it could not be. It's fud. Who? I mean, it might not be. FUD. I have no, I have no idea. And over the next couple of days, we're gonna we're gonna hear about the truth. However, I will say this: Akash gives us some good information. Here's what I think. I think sometimes that we are in such a small pool of different whales and different investors and institutions that just a little bit here can look like if, okay, here's the thing. If I was a whale and I had a ton of money, right? Cause I mean, what are we at? We're, we're under 400 billion, right? And for some whales, that's not, that's not a lot of money. They can just, you know, go in there liquidity and just, you know, do a bunch of uh, different trades and it could uh, screw up the market or what they could do is go, you know what? I'm going to hide my, all the different trades that I'm going to do, and I'm going to pinpoint it to some, you know, innocuous article. You know, maybe this this uh, uh, bit thumb actually is going down, and I'm going to hide it right there. And I'm going to do some trades, let it crash, and I'm going to buy up everything cheaply, which is probably what's happening in the background. And even if they weren't responsible for it, it's the same thing that's going to happen. I always feel like that these whales out there are super manipulating the market, and it's just a game of these big entities. And there's only one way for me to beat these guys. And it's not trading. It's not looking at technical analysis, even though if you want to do that, that's cool. I don't care. Uh, but for me, it's just buying and holding and waiting till I have my exit points. And for Bitcoin, it's around 100,000, maybe even 200,000. For Ethereum, that to me is a $10,000 coin. For Chainlink, it's a $1,000 coin. Uh, you just keep going down, down the line. I will not sell. My hands are as strong as you can possibly get them because I lived with the 2017 crash, or 2018 crash. I just don't care. And I'm too damn stubborn to let go. And that's how I got it. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, I like this. Um, I like listening to Mike Novogratz. Some of you don't like him. Some of you do. But uh, I got to tell you one thing. This guy's been around the block. And uh, the things that he's talking about, I'd like to hear from people who have been there. I do not want to hear about virgins talking about sex I, that's the easy way i can say it so uh when this guy's talking about you know look this is what's happening c5 d5 sushi tesla and the bubble i i find it in, enthralling so let's just take a listen how it's pushing a lot of people into different assets but um what has it meant do you think in terms of the viewpoints on cryptocurrencies so listen you know crypto like any uh, any of the other speculative assets has benefited immensely from a perception of zero interest rates forever and central banks just jamming liquidity in like they're trying to feed a, a foie gras duck. You know, you're, you're, you're jamming the food into the, into the duck. And, um, and so we've seen a, a, a nice move in the Bitcoin price. We've seen a, a stellar move in the Ethereum price. That's based around this burgeoning new space in crypto called decentralized finance. And what you're seeing in DeFi, which is really interesting, is really reminiscent of what you're seeing in Tesla. 
just a speculative frenzy. There are new projects that are doing really cool things, but they're getting such a surge of liquidity so fast. Uh, it's changing at a speed I've never seen in markets. Uh, there was a new project called Sushi that was only launched five days ago, and it's over a billion and a half dollar market cap in five days. And so that worries me some. You know, uh, it's while it's early in DeFi to see speculative frenzy like that. I mean, I think about Tesla today, right? Tesla's a stock that's up 600% on the year. It's trading at over a thousand times earnings, uh, was up 13% yesterday after being up 70% because of a split. And they announced they're gonna sell five you know, billion dollars worth of stock and the market wants to trade up. You know, That's the power of this frenzy we're in right now. Uh, it's, it's a rational exuberance, you can call it what you will. Uh, I'm a little worried that we're gonna have a big correction in a lot of risk assets soon. Um, I don't think it's a correction that lasts for that long because the liquidity machine's not being turned off, but I think we're gonna go through a series of these bubbles and it feels close to being at peak bubble right now. So I don't know how you feel, um, but when I look around and I see all the things that are, are going into the DeFi space and I see all the things that are going into the actual, the, the regular stock market, I'm looking around going, what's going on? Is this is this reality? Is this something that that really should happen? I just I just don't see it. And um, there's a lot of people out there that uh, disagree with me. They think that you have to get on now, and it's going to be fantastic forever. And it's just I'm telling you, this is the way that I see it. Is just like the ICO craze in the in the 2017s. If you get in early, it works out pretty well. But the people who stay around too long are the one holding the bags, and then those are the ones that get hurt. So if you're in this space right now. Just be careful, and that's that's all I can really tell you. There's a lot of money to be made out there. Uh, if you want to be more risky, I'm not that risky of a person. I like to just play it, uh, you know, slow and safe, and uh, just invest. But for other people out there, this might be your opportunity. That is not an, obviously not uh, investment advice. Just be careful. All right. So on that that trend, let's take a listen to Mike and what he's talking about here as far as just advice. This guy has been around since, I mean, the cryptocurrency space. I remember him in 2017. He's one of the reasons why I actually got into it because he was more of the traditional space and he got into cryptocurrency and just talked about this is going to be big. And he still has that vision, but there's a little caveat. Let's take a listen. Key word with some of these new the, these new coins. What, what, what's your ultimate takeaway for investors on these new names, these new coins that are coming to market? You know, do your work, have fun, be careful. Uh, listen, I, I, I lived through and profited through the 2017 crypto bubble, and this feels somewhat reminiscent to it. Uh, there, it was the ICOs back then, you know, a new ICO every day, and the herd would would swim to that ICO and jam the price up and there'd be a frenzy of liquidity and price and then it would collapse and they'd move on to the next thing. And it feels a little bit like that. I, I think DeFi is gonna be around longer. I think that you are building infrastructure, you know, compound might exist in 20 years and we might trade interest rates, not a JP Morgan but on compound or on some, some decentralized uh, baby, but this is still, we're a sandbox right now. And it's a sandbox that's getting liquidity like it's an adult industry. And so it's, it's, it's be very careful. Um, what's interesting is the Bitcoin, the new Bitcoin buyer uh, is an institutional buyer. It's a high net worth buyer. They're coming in methodically and slowly uh, and they're not stopping. And so that's keeping the Bitcoin price up. A lot of the traditional crypto people Right, are selling their Bitcoin, uh, buying the sexier, sexier objects. And so in this move of this kind of mania, which we're seeing in decentralized finance, uh, it's pushing Ethereum price up because it's built on the Ethereum network and other protocols. It's probably putting a little, he a little weight on Bitcoin, which tells you how powerful Bitcoin is that even with that selling pressure, it's still going up based on the macro story. So yeah, and there it is. And I can just tell you that uh, I think that again, a lot of money to be made in the DeFi space. I think DeFi is going to be here for a long time. And the reason why I think that is because the banks have screwed us over for so long and they have made a ton of money off us. It is time to take that power back. There is no reason why they should make all that the fractional reserve or for, uh, finance and, and and lending out our money and just you know just raking everything in and they were the reason essentially for the 2008 collapse so 
there is no reason why they should be in that much power. So DeFi is a man magnificent play. Do I think that it is it is a bubble right now? Yeah, I, I do. I think it's going to go up. So uh, you just have to be careful because if you're the one late, you're the one holding the bag. It's like it's like when they talk about poker. If you don't know who the, who the sucker is in the room, you're the sucker. Last part is just a minute, and he's going to talk about the future of crypto in 10 years. And this is what, you know, kind of gets me excited. Uh, so I, as an investor, I like to go, you know, three, five, 10 years out to see where I'm going to be. Positive in 10 years, the ecosystem around cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the whole space, blockchains is going to be multiple times bigger than it is today. And so that's a big deal. And that's why I think this will be one of the most important years of the space. It still doesn't mean that from time to time, the speculative frenzies get carried away. I love, I own two Teslas. I think it's one of the best auto companies in the world. I think it's gonna be around for a long, long time. I think Elon's a genius. It doesn't warrant a $500 billion market cap trading at you know, 1,300 you know, times earnings. It just doesn't. And we will look back at this episode in Tesla in the textbooks of one that goes up with tulips and you know, 1999, the, uh, the tech bubble, this is a Tesla bubble. Uh, is it going to pop today, tomorrow, the next day? I don't know. Uh, it's going to pop soon uh, because you're, 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 there are just too many markings of, you know, what a top looks like. And so, you know, I'm trying to stay as optimistic and bullish as I can on crypto because it's really early in the cycle, but give the warning that, you know, there are other things in the markets that have me worried. So I think he's wrong here. I, I, I don't think this is the year that everything's, you know, pops off. I think next year, this is the momentum building phase. And once we get into quarter one, quarter two of 2020, I think that's when it all takes off because all the rails have been built. All the different problems are, have been addressed. There's a lot more main nets out there. We're making inroads with these institutional investors and you and me who are retail investors know exactly what it is. And we've been educated. I think next year is the big year. So having said all that and what he talks about as far as Tesla, I will still buy Tesla and dollar cost average and later uh, because I think it's a fantastic company. And also the same thing with cryptocurrency. And I still believe it. All right. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. So last article before we get to the Q of the day, and I'll make this one short. Uh, why more Bitcoiners are transitioning from maximalism to centrism. And I was going to, you know, highlight the whole article and go through it, but it was boring. And uh, the only thing I want to say about this is that when I got in 2017, there was nothing but it was like it was like the tone vase and the Max Kaisers and all those different people who were like shouting from the rooftops that Bitcoin is the only thing. And all the other shit coins out there uh, were just there to take money from Bitcoin. And I try to see their mentality and I kind of get it because it's because I mean, we talk about cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency. So with Bitcoin currency, I get it right. We're not using Ethereum as currency, right? We're not using it for the as the US dollar or the, or the yuan or anything like that. So I kind of get that whole mentality. But I mean, it's been it's been time. It's time to move on. And I consider myself what would be this term centrism. I think Bitcoin is going to be the first to pop off. I think it is. It is an old technology. I think it's like the Netscape Navigator uh, as far as like a browsing apparatus. But, you know, you have to have that Netscape Navigator uh, to get to Google Chrome. And then you have to have Google Chrome to get to the Brave browser. So. I do think this is going to make a lot of sense. And I think as time moves on, even these huge uh, Bitcoin maximus have to bow the, or bend the knee and go, look, <laughs> this can't do everything. I mean, even Trace Mayer, who is like the OG of OGs, Bitcoin maximus has said, he says, these, there may be a number of altcoins that can perform specific functions better than Bitcoin and will have a reason to exist and thrive. Bitcoin doesn't need to satisfy all the needs of all the people because that is ridiculous and stupid. Sometimes you want a knife. Sometimes you want a fork. Sometimes you want both. So we have to keep an open mind. And he's right. I do not see Bitcoin as an oracle. I do not see Bitcoin for DeFi. I do not see Bitcoin for tracking merchandise and uh, doing all the things that uh, VeChain, like for instance, can do, and to uh, identify frauds, and I, I just don't see it. I, maybe I'm missing the point, but I sure as hell do not see Bitcoin as being an actual currency. Uh, just look at what happened in 2017; they couldn't even handle uh, what we did back then, um, as far as the market. So, Bitcoin centrism—that is my new phrase. All right, let's move into Q of the day. Hey, everybody, welcome to the office for Q of the day. So. Got a couple great ones. Uh, there's actually two two questions that I've been putting off answering until I found the right time. I think this was the right time. 
So there's two. First one is from uh, Thomas, and Thomas asks a pretty pretty great question. He says, "Hey Dan, I enjoy your perspective, and I want to get your opinion on hot wallets like Celsius versus putting Bitcoin into an IRA." If you don't realize, uh, we did a, a pretty intensive or extensive video which goes over uh, Roth and SEP and traditional IRAs and how that can work out for ta I mean massive massive tax savings. Uh, for cryptocurrency. It's not just for the traditional market anymore. You can put it over into uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, even gold, stuff like that. So uh, so Thomas asked then, I didn't realize crypto IRAs existed until your recent video. Thanks for the heads up. How does taxing Bitcoin now and locking it up compare to these huge compounding interest rates we are seeing, which is uh, 6%, 12%, 18% yearly for cryptocurrencies on platforms like Celsius. As with most things, doing a mix of the two is probably the best way to go, but if you only had a small to moderate amount of crypto, would you lean more heavily towards taxing it now or the weekly interest? So here's my answer in a nutshell. Yes, it is great to do two things at once. The things with, and we talked about this in the video, I'm gonna link that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it pop up right now, but it's also gonna be at the end of this video. The things with, with IRAs, uh, they're great, um, traditional SEPs and Roths. The things that suck about them is that you can only put about $6,000, depending on your age. If you're 49 and a half or, or lower, it's 6,000 per year. Uh, if you're 50 or above, it's 7,000 uh, per year. So that's pretty much it, which if you think about it, uh, could be pretty substantial, uh, especially moving forward. If you could have bought, like, like, like let's say Ethereum in uh, 2015, 2016, when it was around 100 bucks or 10 bucks, uh, how great would that be? So if you could invest 6,000 in that, fantastic. Now, 6,000 to Bitcoin, unless we get another huge uh, sell-off, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna get like maybe half, or, you know, depending on the end of the year, might not be that much. So it really depends on how you wanna do it. I see the IRA as putting it into certain cryptocurrencies that could, you know, exponentially grow. I think Ethereum is a $10,000 coin, and uh, I would probably put the money into that if I'm gonna do the 6,000. But again, it's a combination of both. I will max out my IRA, with iTrust, and I will put the rest of it into a, you know, in this, not the rest of it. I'm not gonna say like, I'm gonna put everything in a Celsius, I'm not. I'm gonna put a part in a Celsius, maybe 25%, some, somewhere that I can get a, a type of interest. Alex Mashinsky, um, he is the CEO of uh, Celsius, and he is also the godfather of voice over internet protocol, VOIP. And he talks about how his mission and he's a very, very um, open guy. His mission is to make sure that you can all retire on the interest. And it, this is the very early days. So if you think about it, okay, well, how much would I need if, I, if, I'm, if the interest rate is like, you know, 8%, 9%, 12%, 15%, or whatever else it is? Depends on where you're at, right? I mean, if you're in Costa Rica, you don't need squat. If you're in New York, Manhattan, uh, you're going to need a ton of money. So it just depends on what you want to do. But uh, again, for Thomas to answer his question, it's a combination of both. Me personally, I'm going to max out the IRA. I'm going to uh, put into uh, money yielding things and then also take a hard look at DeFi. And the rest of them, I have my exit plan uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum, MXRP, Chainlink, Cardano. Everything is out there. I will never, ever sell all of my cryptocurrency. That would be ridiculous because you never know. It could be a moonshot. Just depends on which one. So hopefully it answers your question. So that Thomas's, that's the first one. And now for the second one, let me bring it up. All right, this is from Chaz. Chaz, that's a good name, Chaz. It says, hey, Dan, love the video. Is being toured here. I can't decide to keep my ETH on trade into DOT. He says he mines ETH at about four coins a month. It's pretty good money, actually. I mean, look, for, for Ethereum, who knows how much that could, that could mean in the future. Um, which I think will lead me to my next question. Like with the ETH 2.0 coming out and it's proof of stake, how's it going to, you know, uh, impact Chaz's business model there because he's going to have to find something else to, to uh, mine. Anyhow, he, said, he says, I mine ETH at about four coins a month. Holdler, not much of a trader thoughts. Uh, Chaz, I'm right there with you. I am more of a, of a hold on type of person. I'm more of an investor and I like to, to buy up things and just hold on to them. My favorite holds are land. I love to buy land and just hold on to it for years and just see it appreciate. You don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to, you don't have to look at any charts. You don't really do too much. So land is fantastic. And I think cryptocurrency is the same way. You can, you can buy it and hold on to it. And, uh, you know, a, a good amount are going to go up. Some will not. Uh, XRP being one of my, one of my um, 
reminders of, uh, of when you should actually let go of something. But I'm just too damn stubborn to let it go. Just, I just am. I've already lost 90%, so 10% ain't going to kill me. Let's see what happens. Let's roll the dice, baby. Anyhow, uh, to answer Chaz's question, uh, if you're looking to uh, keep the ETH or trade in a DOT, here's honestly what I would do is if you're mining for Ethereum a month, right? And I don't know what your overhead is. I, you probably have to sell some Ethereum to actually pay for the, for the electricity cost and whatever other overhead you have. Great. So let's say you have to sell two Ethereum. I don't know. So you're left with two. What I would do is I would hold on to a good amount. I, would, I mean, if I, if I had two Ethereum, I'd probably hold on to one and a half Ethereum per month. And the other half of Ethereum, let's say it's 400 bucks, I would put $200 into DOT. And you know my slogan, dollar cost average. So I'm not going to take the 200 bucks and drop it on a Wednesday and go, well, I hope that's the, you know, the lowest price it is and hopefully it goes up. I just don't do things that way. I have, a, I have a strategy and the strategy is just to be slow and sure. And that means that I'm going to put it in. Uh, for, for you, Chaz, this might be a good one. Every three to seven days, put about 25 bucks in and then see what happens. Uh, other people who have a lot of, you know, a ton of money, they might say, you know what, I'm going to buy DOT. I'm going to, buy, I'm going to put 500 bucks a day into DOT. I know people that do that um, just because they have the money and they're like, you know what, I'm going to dollar cost average in. I'm going to see where it all leads me. And it just depends on what you want to do. So dollar cost average, like I said, instead of taking the whole wad of money that you have, 200, 1,000, 100,000 dollars and just dropping it all in one day, space it all out and just buy it at either like daily, every three days, four days, every week, every two weeks, every month, and then take a percentage of it. So, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you got a thousand bucks, 200 bucks, uh, we'll say every Monday, and then off you go, or a hundred bucks every three days, off you go. And that, that would be it. I think that's, that's the safest thing because right now there are so many fluctuations, especially with DeFi and things like that. If you drop everything right now, <laughs> you're down 30% tomorrow, or you're up 100%, who knows? But uh, I would rather be a little bit safer then a little bit uh, uh, loose with the money. And uh, I think over time, that's the winning strategy. It's boring, but guess what? Uh, boring works, and that's usually what happens with investors. So you never hear too many uh, investors crying like, oh man, I, I lost so much money over the last 20 years because I dollar cost average. Usually it's traders. All right, so that's it for uh, question of the day. Let's jump back. All right, and that's it. So hope that answered uh, some of those questions for those two people. Uh, really thankful that uh, you made it to the, the end of the video. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Um, you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. And I just do random shout outs. So for all my level ones, uh, there is only one level. I used to have two, but I just said that it's probably best if you just keep that money and spend it in crypto. So Johnny Henderson, Joey Serena, Marguerite Bonnet, uh, Kelly Church, who we got? Frank Weinhammer. That's a good one. I am not I. Barry Belasco and Metals Man 75. So thanks everybody for joining. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more gonna pop on your left and right. Not sure because YouTube controls all that stuff, but uh, I try to do my best. And um, yeah, go ahead and check those out. All right, thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.